Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is my own personal Kawasaki Z900 RS, the SE model. And in this video, we're gonna talk about, after my second season of riding it, how is it, what's good, and what's not good. And some things that have changed about how good it is involve looking at it in today's context. So when I bought this bike, it was a 2020 two bike that I bought between 2022 and 2023, about in the winter. So my first riding season was 2023, second riding season was 2024, which I basically finished here. It's our last nice day here, I think. Uh, I'm not gonna winterize it quite yet, but uh, you know, I've had some good seasons with it, but there are some things I would recommend about this bike. And for 2025, which is the riding season we're heading into, motorcycles are already starting to be released for 2025. There's a reason that I would not recommend this bike anymore. So let's talk about all the details right now. So let's talk about why I bought this bike first to help you decide if it's right for you. So first of all, I bought it because the last bike I owned before this was a Kawasaki Versus 650. And I wanted to move into something with a little bit more power and a little bit more sport. But I really like the seating position of the Versus 650. That upright seating position for me, maybe I'm getting old, whatever it is, it's just more comfortable. So what I really liked about this bike was it had that power and it also had that seating position, but it also really was underneath a modern sport bike. And I think that's where some people get this bike wrong when you just look at it online. You think about it as maybe being a softer, milder bike. And even if you look at power numbers, it's maybe a little bit more mild than a pr true super sport bike. But what it does is offer, and I think this is sort of true for the current motorcycle span, is it offers a true sporting experience on the road. Now, if you've ever driven, for instance, a actual race car, it is just not comfortable. It is not something that's practical for the street, both in the power delivery, both in the seating uh, of a regular car, the suspension, that kind of thing. And same thing with like a really off-road type Jeep or something like that, right? It's the, when you get to customize them so they're so far off-road, they're less practical for the everyday. So what this thing offers is something that still, to this day, really appeals to me. It is something that is sport underneath, but not so far sporty that it's not practical for the everyday, not comfortable for the everyday. So with the adjustable front suspension, the Olin shock in the back, this SE model has those. I really do appreciate that, that you know, you can play with it, you can tinker with it. So you get that full kind of race bike experience of being able to tinker with things like that, play with them. You've got the, um, not just the fully adjustable Olin shock, but the remote preload adjuster up here. So you can always play with things, t tweak them. And that's part of the fun of owning a true race bike or a super sport bike but again you've got that comfortable seating position i mean this thing makes pretty much the same horsepower near the same horsepower as a lot of the 600 bikes used to make and it makes far more torque so that torque that pulling power really gives it a unique character as well and it sounds pretty cool and let's be honest part of the reason you buy this bike especially this se model in 2022 was because of this paint scheme now things are changing for 2025. First of all, you can get this level paint scheme here in 2024, instead of with the black paint and the yellow, you can get it with the green paint and the yellow. You don't have to get the upgraded suspension, or the upgraded Olin suspension. You don't get the Brembo brakes, but you can get that at a cheaper price than even what I bought this for. So that is something worth considering for people. For people. Now for me, I have no regrets about the Brembo brakes. Again, do I need Brembo brakes for my riding? Not at all, but the feel is super precise. I'm a detail oriented guy and it's the same thing with the Olin suspension. You can get by with non-Olin suspension. For most riders, they're never gonna notice the difference, but I think a lot of riders do notice the difference, especially if you're into the details. So I don't regret going to this model, but there are some people out there, uh, Missenden Flyer had a bike like this. He says it's maybe too perfect, and other people have said there's other issues with it. So let's talk about what's good and what's not good about this bike. So first of all, let's talk about the good. Even though this is a 900cc bike, it's relatively compact. It's got a larger tank, but it's pretty compact. It's not super heavy for what it is, and it's really comfortable. It feels quite nimble out on the road. The good is it's got lots of power in that street zone. Now the Z900 has the same engine, but actually has a higher peak horsepower. But I've talked about this in other videos, how this one has a lower first gear and a taller sixth gear. So more aggressive first gear, along with uh, the peak torque number that hits a thousand RPM lower on this bike, you have really strong acceleration but in six gear, a little bit better cruising ability. Now you still have tons of passing power in six gear at just about any speed, but the Z900 would have that torque um, a little higher up and it would have the uh, highest gear a little uh, 
you know, because it's not as tall of a high gear, you're still gonna have the torque in a different way. So basically this is a little more relaxed on the highway. Fuel efficiency for me has been really good. I'm regularly getting when I'm just cruising around four and a half liters per hundred kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles per gallon. I don't know what that is in miles per gallon UK, but four and a half liters per hundred kilometers is exceptionally good. And one of the things that's cool about the styling of this bike is it's appreciated by bikers of all kinds, right? If you sit there and you park and you got some Harley guys coming up, they appreciate the style. Uh, sport bike riders start to recognize some of the components and they're like, hey, that's a pretty you know, serious bike. And it is, and that's kind of fun. But there are some problems with it. I disagree with Missenden Flyer's assessment that this is too perfect or too, uh, too refined or too, it doesn't have enough characters, I think how he described it. He gets to ride a whole bunch of different bikes and he also owns a number of bikes. And when you have just one bike, uh, you have to make compromises on something and you know, I would rather compromise on having a bike that's a little too perfect. Uh, to me, it's not that it lacks character, it just doesn't have some of the character that some of his British bikes have and I totally get that. But as an everyday bike, as a do everything bike, it's very, very good. And the power delivery on this bike is fantastic for that street experience, uh, including that street sport. One of the problems I actually have with this bike is of all the bikes I've driven this past year, this is one of those bikes that always begs you to go a little faster. It's just one of those things where, you know, I've driven fast cars and you can drive them, you know, slowly and it's comfortable, but you can also really dig into them. This one's always begging you to dig into it a little bit more. It, it has that sporty character for sure. And it almost is harder to drive like a normal person uh, than you would think for a bike like this. It's a little bit more hooligan underneath. It's a little bit more, um, you know, the, the sound combined with everything else. It just sends the message to your brain like, let's go. I've got more to give. And that's one of the things that I find is interesting about this bike that I didn't expect. It's always wanting to go, always wanting to go a little faster to give a little bit more. And it's just the character of the bike. That's the way it is. Um, you know, driving lots of other types of bikes. Some of them have, you know, similar power and they don't have that uh, push to make you go faster and faster. So there's something about the character that some message that it sends to your brain, like I wanna go. And I've, other people have said that about this bike as well. That's one of the negatives, but there are other negatives as well. This style of bike coming from the Versus 650, it doesn't have the windshield. Now I can add the windshield. It doesn't have bags that the Versus 650 had. I can add bags to this as well, variety of bags. And I have figured out a luggage solution. I know you guys have been asking for that video. Let me know if you still wanna see it. I'm not even sure if you do wanna see it, uh, but there are ways to make this luggage, but it's again, not fast factory luggage. And one of the problems with a bike that looks like this is I'm afraid to mess with the looks. I don't want to put saddlebags that don't look right on it. I don't want to put a windshield that to me doesn't look right on it. I like the classic tie to this bike. So when you buy a bike with this type of style, it becomes harder to make your own without sacrificing the style. So that's one thing that's uh, uh, there. Now, there is a difference for 2025, and I had this problem in 2022, 23 when I bought this, but 2025 things have changed, and I'm not sure I would recommend this bike unless you really want the style, because things have changed, even in Kawasaki's own world. So let's talk about that. So one of my favorite bikes all time is the Ninja 1000 SX. Now that's moved to the Ninja 1100 SX for 2025. We'll talk about that a whole lot different, but that bike had a lot of the same things. If relatively comfortable seating position, sporty ride. It just didn't have everything I liked. When I saw this, I just bought it because I'm emotionally attached to it. And I think that's a really good reason to buy a bike. Don't buy a bike based on a spec sheet, buy a bike because you like it. And I like this bike, but the Z900 for 2025 has gone through some significant upgrades and it is cheaper and always has been cheaper than the Z900 RS. So it shares an engine with this, but remember this bike only has two levels of traction control, regular ABS, and that's it. And that's part of the things that you can like about this bike. It is a throwback in both looks and in feel to a classic motorcycle. You do need some traction control these days, uh, but you know, ride modes are controlled by your throttle and your, your left foot, right? Gear shifting and that kind of thing. And uh, the controls here, I like the old school dash. It's not confusing with multiple um, LCD screens or TFT screens. But for 2025, the Z900, not the RS, the Z900, has the availability of a base model or an SE model. The SE model adds the Olin shock, adds the fancier suspension. 
but you can also get on that SE model uh, or it comes standard with an IMU, which can sense the bike slipping out, uh, wheeling, doing all kinds of different things. It gives you ride modes. It gives you connectivity to an app. It's voice controlled. You can change ride modes through your voice if you want. You can have navigation information through the screen. It has cruise control standard. It has a whole lot of things. It has better tires than this standard and it makes more horsepower. Now the more horsepower isn't a huge deal to me because while making more peak horsepower, in a 900cc bike, you care about where it is in the middle of the rev range, and this thing's just meaty in the middle of the rev range. Like I said, it's got a little bit lower uh, uh, torque, lower down than the current Z900. But the Z900 that I just described has a lower price point than this by a significant amount. So this thing essentially gives you two levels of traction control, and that's about it, and some style. The other one gives you a whole lot of technology, and I didn't even mention the quick shifter. I really think a bike like this should have a quick shifter. It's 2025 now, this still doesn't. Now I get it, you've got the classic kind of look, the classic kind of feel, but I don't believe that in 2025, this bike should come without cruise control and without a quick shifter because I like quick shifters. They can be fun, you don't have to use it. If you wanna to go to the old school, you know, pull the clutch, shift the gears, you can do that. But if you wanna drive this thing like it's capable, and again, underneath all this, Brembo brakes, Olin suspension, you've got a performance package. It's fun to tune into that performance package with something like a quick shifter. Cruise control is nice as well. I've driven this on a couple longer trips. I just like cruise control. It's a big engine, it's a smooth engine. It, you know, tours great. I don't have the wind protection, which doesn't really bother me with a good helmet, earplugs in, but, I do like the idea of having cruise control to just relax your hand, and you can't get that on this bike. So the Z900, Kawasaki's own lineup, does change the game for this because they're still charging you significantly more for just styling, and that's all it is. And I paid more for styling when this and the Z900 were different, but it had the LCD screen, but it didn't have the app connectivity, it didn't have cruise control, it didn't have the IMU, it didn't have um, you know various things. The ride modes don't really bother me too much, uh, but it just didn't have a lot of stuff. It wasn't a huge jump to just choose the one you wanted based on styling. Now, however, if you don't need the styling, the Z900, even in the SE model, is significantly cheaper. And the Z900 in the SE model, so you're getting all the Olins, everything I just talked about with the electronics, is cheaper than the base model of this bike. So for 2025, I'm not saying don't buy this bike because this bike brings you a ton of joy. It is an absolute blast to drive. It is a classic throwback. Like I said, you're shifting through the gears like you would. You're looking down at the gauges like you would have in the original, like, you know, bikes that I kind of grew up with. And that has a cool feel to it. It feels like a motorcycle should. But for the money, this is a hard bike to recommend unless you really really like the style. It's always been, you have to really like the style to buy this, but now you gotta really, really like the style. So tell me what you think of this bike, tell me what you guys think of it in 2025. This paint scheme is no longer available for 2025. When you get the SE, you're gonna get a cool, um, sort of matte black kind of color through here. Uh, still got the only suspension gold forks, gold wheels, but a different color. Um, yeah, tell me what you guys think of the Z900 RS, and if that Z900 would tempt you away from the looks of this, especially for that cheaper price, at least here in Canada. So again, I always give credit to uh, Wheels and Deals. I throw out a uh, shot to them. Jim Gilbert's, Wheels and Deals, Jim Gilbert's Power Sports, the number one Kawasaki dealer in the country. They're the ones who sold this to me, so I'll give them a little shout out if you're looking to buy anything new for 2025. I'm gonna be reviewing all those bikes that I talked about and many, 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 many more. Uh, so make sure you tune in this channel. If you haven't, if you made it this far, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button to review bikes, ATVs, even snowmobiles, all kinds of things all the time, almost every day. So uh, tune into that and uh, hit the subscribe, leave a nice positive comment and maybe hit a like button. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll talk to you in the next one.